Thank you, Operator. Good morning. On today's call are Todd Schwartz, Chief Executive Officer and Executive Chairman, and Pam Johnson, Chief Financial Officer. Our second quarter 2024 earnings press release and supplemental presentation can be found at investors.opfi.com. During this call, Opfi will discuss certain forward-looking information. These forward-looking statements are based on assumptions and assessments made by Opfi's management in light of their experience and assessment of historical trends, current conditions, expected future developments, and other factors they believe to be appropriate. Any forward-looking statements made during this call are made as of today, and Opfi undertakes no duty to update or revise any such statement, whether as a result of new information, future events, or otherwise. Important factors that could cause actual results, developments, and business decisions to differ materially from forward-looking statements are described in the company's filings with the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, including the sections entitled Risk Factors. In today's remarks by management, the company will discuss certain non-GAAP financial metrics. A reconciliation of these non-GAAP financial measures to the most comparable GAAP measures can be found in the earnings press release issued earlier this morning. This call is being webcast live and will be available for replay on our website. I would now like to turn the call over to Todd. Thanks, Sean, and good morning, everyone. We're excited to report record second quarter profitability and revenue, which substantially exceeded our expectations and enabled us to raise full year earnings guidance by more than 20%. The strong profitability in the quarter was a result of operational and credit initiatives that drove strong loss, payment, and recovery performance, as well as improved operating achievement on key metrics and net profit margin. We're also proud that we have successfully executed many other strategic initiatives that we've previously outlined during the past several quarters. We've realized more operational efficiencies that continue to strengthen the core business and increased profitability. We've also returned value to stockholders through a special dividend and share repurchases. In addition, we strengthened the balance sheet by paying down debt and generating solid free cash flow. And we've identified adjacent verticals to expand our reach in facilitating credit access, including closing our first investment in Biddy Advance last week. Pam will review our second quarter results in detail, our earnings guidance increase for full year 2024 and our earnings outlook for the third quarter. Before she does, I will cover three primary topics. One, highlights from the second quarter of 2024. Two, a discussion of the recently announced Biddy transaction. And three, a summary of recent capital allocation initiatives provided by our balance sheet. Total revenue increased 3.1% to $126.3 million, a company record for a second quarter. Gap net income grew 53.1% to $27.7 million, another OPFI record for a second quarter. And adjusted net income increased 56.2% year over year to $24.8 million, also a company record for a second quarter. Our key highlights for the quarter compared to the prior year are a solid 6 percentage point increase in revenue yield to 134.8%, a substantial 30% increase in recoveries, a 3.7 percentage point improvement in the annualized net charge-off rate as a percentage of total revenue to 32.5%, a 90 basis point improvement in total expenses as a percentage of total revenue to 45%. Net income margin increased by 710 basis points to 21.9%, and adjusted net income margin expanded by 660 basis points to 19.6%. Moreover, strong free cash flow generation continued to bolster the balance sheet. In Q2, we generated 18 million of free cash flow as defined by total cash provided by operating activities minus total cash used in financing activities. At the quarter end, total cash, cash equivalents, and restricted cash was $80.8 million, including $46.6 million in unrestricted cash, and an additional $223.2 million of available 
unused debt capacity on our financing facilities. As we have mentioned on these earnings calls during the past several quarters, we have been evaluating strategic opportunities that fit our mission to facilitate credit access to everyday Americans and would help us diversify OpFi with additional products and customers. We have focused on the small business financing market as we believe there are supply and demand imbalances similar to the consumer market. Like the everyday consumer that we serve with op loans, there are many small businesses that are underserved by traditional banks and lack access to sufficient credit to meet their working capital needs. According to a recent study by the Federal Reserve, 71% of medium to high credit risk small business applicants for a loan, line of credit, or merchant cash advance have applied to a non-bank financing company, online lender, or community development financial institution. 50% of small businesses that are discouraged non-applicants cite lender requirements as being too strict and or they were denied financing previously as reasons for why they did not expect to be approved and therefore did not apply for financing. We are excited by our equity investment in Biddy that includes options to acquire a majority stake and ultimately the entire enterprise in the future. Craig Hecker, who has majority control of Biddy, is an industry veteran and leader particularly within the small business finance space. I'm personally looking forward to collaborating with Craig and helping him and his team take Biddy to the next level of profitable growth by leveraging OpFi's expertise in data analytics, marketing, and automation. This acquisition is intended to serve as the foundational piece of our new small business financing vertical. Biddy is a credit access company that offers revenue-based financing and other working capital solutions. Biddy generates income through origination and service fee income and therefore does not have balance sheet or credit risk. As demonstrated by our strong profitable growth, solid free cash flow generation, and first acquisition, we are carefully managing Op5 for earnings growth. We believe earnings growth can be achieved given our disciplined expense management, better operational efficiency, and stronger credit performance, despite low to mid single digit revenue growth. As I discussed earlier, our solid balance sheet has provided us with optionality to allocate capital. In Q2, we returned cash to stockholders through a dividend and share repurchases. We announced and paid a 12 cent per share special dividend to our public Class A stockholders, as well as a 12 cent per unit special distribution to members of Opportunity Financial LLC. After announcing a new 20 million share repurchase program, we purchased approximately $2.5 million of Class A common stock during the quarter at an average price of $3.27. And we have continued to repurchase shares in the third quarter. In addition to returning capital to stockholders, we also paid down $10 million of debt on our corporate term loan. We're continuing to evaluate additional strategic opportunities in new and existing verticals that we believe would enhance our goal of further facilitating credit access. I believe OpFi has made tremendous progress during the past two and a half years. We have more work to do and we look forward to building upon the foundation that we have set. In closing, we believe OpFi has the ingredients needed to build a leading credit access and financial services business with a suite of best-in-class digital financial service products for everyday Americans where there are large addressable markets and a supply-demand imbalance in credit access. Our first step in executing on this vision was taken with our equity investment in Biddy to enter a small and medium business financing market. With that, I'll turn the call over to Pam. Thanks, Todd, and good morning, everyone. For the second quarter, total revenue increased 3.1% year-over-year to $126.3 million, with a 2.4% increase in total net originations to $205.5 million and a 600 basis point improvement in total revenue yield to 134.8%. Total retained net originations decreased 3.1% to $189.3 million, since one of our bank partners now retains a larger portion of loans originated in some states. From a mixed perspective, 55.6% of originations were to existing customers and 44.4% were to new customers. During the quarter, along with our bank partners, we continued to emphasize loans to existing customers 
since those loans are generally less risky than to new customers. Credit performance during the second quarter supported this strategy, as refinance loans to existing customers had lower delinquencies than loans to new customers. On an absolute basis, new customer originations for the quarter increased by 4.4% year-over-year, while existing customer originations increased by 0.9%. The year-over-year increase in new customer originations were the result of strategic credit and marketing initiatives intended to drive lower-risk new originations. The annualized net charge-up rate as the percentage of average receivables decreased by 280 basis points to 43.8% for the second quarter, compared to 46.6% for the prior year quarter. And the annualized net charge-off rate as a percentage of total revenue decreased by 370 basis points to 32.5% compared to 36.2% last year. Turning to expenses, total expenses were 56.8 million, or 45% of total revenue, compared to 56.2 million, or 45.9% of total revenue in the second quarter last year. Interest expense totaled $11 million, or 8.7% of total revenue, compared to $11.2 million, or 9.2% of total revenue in the same period a year ago. Adjusted net income was $24.8 million, compared to $15.9 million for the comparable period last year. Adjusted earnings were $0.29 cents per share, compared to $0.19 cents in the second quarter last year. For the three months ended June 30, 2024, OpFi had 86.3 million weighted average diluted shares outstanding for the calculation of adjusted earnings per share. We believe our balance sheet remains healthy with cash, cash equivalents, and restricted cash of 80.8 million, total debt of 301.8 million, and total stockholders' equity of 201.7 million as of the end of the second quarter. We ended the period with $605.8 million in funding capacity, including $223.2 million of unused debt capacity under financing facilities. Now turning to our outlook. For the full year 2024, we are reiterating guidance for total revenue of $510 million to $530 million. We are currently pacing toward the midpoint of this range, $520 million. We are raising earnings guidance by more than 20% for adjusted net income and adjusted earnings per share. We now expect adjusted net income of 63 million to 65 million compared to our prior range of 50 to 54 million. In addition, we now anticipate adjusted earnings per share of 73 cents to 75 cents compared to the previous range of 58 to 62 cents. For the third quarter, we are introducing guidance of adjusted net income of 17 million to 19 million and adjusted earnings per share of 20 cents to 22 cents. Based on seasonal differences, we also expect total revenue in Q4 to be slightly higher than in Q3, while the annualized net charge-up rate as a percentage of total revenue is anticipated to be substantially lower in Q3 than in Q4. Nonetheless, we anticipate year-over-year improvement in this annualized net charge-up rate in both of those quarters. As a reminder, this rate is typically the lowest in the second and third quarters, while highest in the first and fourth quarters. I'll close my prepared remarks by announcing our participation at next week's Sedoti Microcap Virtual Conference. Sean and I plan to meet with investors on both days, August 14th and 15th, and our presentation will be on the second day at 1.45 p.m. Eastern Time. The webcast of our presentation can be accessed with a link on our investor relations website. With that, I would now like to turn the call over to the operator for Q&A. Operator? Thank you. At this time, if you'd like to ask a question, please press the star and one keys on your telephone keypad. Keep in mind, you may remove yourself from the question queue at any time by pressing star and two. Again, it is star and one if you'd like to ask a question today. We'll take our first question from Mike Rondall with Northland. Please go ahead. Your line is open. Hey, guys. This is Luke on for Mike. Uh, congrats on the nice quarter. Um, just want to start here with yields being up about 6% year over year. I um, was just wondering how much of this was due to mix uh, or due to mix versus pricing. Yeah, uh, good good question. I mean, a, a lot of it has to do with credit performance, right? We're we're getting uh, we're getting less dropping out of accrual and 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 more yield from uh, paying customers. We had a very very strong you know payments and recoveries in the second quarter. Um, a lot of the initiatives that we launched in the second half of 22 are now in in full operation. Um, we also you know had sunsetted some of the, the pricing. Uh, testing we were doing last year, which also increased yield. 
uh, but uh, you know we were happy to see uh, strong repayment rates um, and, and strong recoveries that that yielded uh, you know higher yield for the for the quarter. Got it. And then for the low-end consumer payment and borrowing trends, does the uh, the lower credit losses kind of mean that you guys can step on the growth pedal? Yeah, I think, I mean, that certainly in the second half, you know, we're starting our confidence level in the stability of our credit, um, you know, with the launch of our, our new underwriting model. Uh, we, we feel confident that growth is out there, and we're starting to uh, roll out our initiatives for growth in the second half. We're also feeling more comfortable with credit seasonally. Uh, you know, the second half of the year, the, the, the credit uh, performs uh, you know, better than kind of some of the, the, the vintages in the first half. And so we, our confidence level and our growth initiatives are, are, are we're starting to deploy. So we think that there's some growth out there. Got it. And then just last one here, uh, any updates on the competitive environment or, or anything that's changed since last quarter? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, there, there's, a, there's a lot of noise going on with, you know, the the, the the credit card late fees with uh, buy you know the buy now pay later with earn wage access um, you know we're just we're just focused on our core customer we're focused on driving value to our customer and providing you know the best available service at the highest NPS and I think we we continue to watch you know some of the other options in the market and some of the co competition but I feel I feel really good about where we're operating the our, our operating metrics and our uh, prospects for growth. Yeah, that's helpful. Thank you guys for taking the questions, and congrats again on the quarter. Thank you. And we'll take our next question from Dave Storms with Stonegate. Please go ahead. Your line is open. Good morning, and thank you for taking my questions. Uh, just hoping we could start with the Biddy transaction, just high level, uh, if that if you see any synergies in the near or short term that uh, you're especially excited to take advantage of. Yeah, I mean, we're, we, we, you know, we just closed it last week, but, um, you know, I've gotten to know Craig uh, pretty well. Uh, I think, think Craig is a, you know, a talented operator and obviously someone who has a lot of experience in the, in the small business space. Um, we think the, the, the collaboration between our two companies is going to yield great results. Uh, you know, to remind everyone, Craig has uh, a business that, you know, currently is, is an origination, so he's earning his, his income from uh, origination and servicing. Um, we think that has a lot of optionality. He also has a really good digital platform. Um, we believe in this digitization of small business and think there's a lot of growth there. I think when you take a lot of the things uh, that we do well and the things that Craig's doing well, there's a lot of complementary uh, skill sets, and I think it's gonna it's gonna yield great results. I think um, you know we've we've done a lot of research on the SMB market, and we feel that um, there is supply demand imbalance, and we feel that there's there's ability to not only take market share, but as the um, addressable market continues to go online to search for working capital options that their their potential is even growth um, in the total addressable market so you know we're excited um, you know we're going to be uh, we think there's some accretion to earnings that we mentioned um, in this year and then you know for the future but uh, you know we we feel really good about taking our time there uh, we kind of started to talk about it for for over a year and a half, and so I think we're we're just happy that we you know fulfilled on our and delivered on our our promise that we're going to you know create um, you know Opfi is going to create a brand that has best a suite of best in class digital financial service products that address supply demand imbalance and credit access, and uh, you know we feel like we're on our way. We have all the ingredients to be able to do that, and, and will yield uh, great results for us. That's very helpful. Thank you. Um, and then just turn, it sounds like you were pretty uh, aggressive with uh, acquiring new customers. Uh, just curious as to what form, you know, that took. Were there any concessions? Did, you know, acquisition costs go up? Uh, and kind of what does that look like, you know, with that new vintage of new customers? Yeah, it's actually, actually no. Um, our, our acquisition cost year over year is down 3%. So we're being very disciplined. Um, and, and to remind everyone, you know, the, the second quarter vintage typically is, has some of the highest charge offs of the year on the other side of tax refund and, and, and payment season. Um, but 
we, we are liking, you know, our, what we're seeing. Our funnel is, is robust and that we think that um, we can still maintain that the, our CPF um, and, and, cont- and, and find growth here in the second half. We think that there's, um, you know, the market is starting to, 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 you know, come in our favor and we think that we're well positioned to take advantage of it. That's perfect. Thank you. And then just one more, if I could, from a macro level, um, you know, we're seeing unemployment tick up slightly. Uh, you know, there's almost certainty that the Fed will cut rates, uh, you know, at least once this year. How do you factor that into uh, underwriting uh, going forward through the back half of the year? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a good question. I think, you know, we'll, for us, inflation is, is, is probably the most painful for our customer. We experienced that in 2022 and had to, you know, and handled it. Uh, I think that we, we that unemployment is another concern, but I think there's also benefit when the Fed lowers rates, right? We'll be paying uh, less interest costs, which is, which is, you know, obviously a, a benefit to our, to our P&L. Um, but it's something we're, you know, we're going to watch and obviously uh, making sure that uh, people are employed, you know, that's something that in our underwriting we will, we will be kind of watching weekly and making sure that uh, we're not seeing large spikes in unemployment that would cause blips in our, in our delinquency rates or credit. Understood. That's very helpful. Thank you for taking my questions and good luck in the third quarter. Thank you. And once again, if you'd like to ask a question, please press the star and one keys on your telephone keypad. We can pause for a moment to allow any further questions to queue. And there are no further questions on the line at this time, so we'll turn the program to Todd Schwartz, Chief Executive Officer, for any additional or closing remarks. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today, and we look forward to reporting our Q3 results in November. Have a great day. This does conclude today's program. Thank you for your participation, and you may now disconnect.